Right, good afternoon everybody and a very warm welcome to our webinar this afternoon, Women in Finance to celebrate International Women's Day. So I'm Juliette Kelly, I'm the uh, EDI lead for the Business School. I'd like to thank my colleagues um, who's made this uh, diversity mini series event possible, to our um, student experience officers and to our wonderful alumni team of course. So before I pass on to Zara, just like to say uh, that this event is being recorded so please as well do follow the hashtag BBS. SEDI. You can follow um, uh, all the events previously and uh, links to future events as well. So Zara, we've got um, our, is our wonderful chair this afternoon. She's um, CAP analyst at Accenture and event manager, more importantly, at the um, University of Birmingham Women in Finance Society. So very experienced lady in this regard, a double degree in economics as well from the University of Birmingham and Universitas Indonesia. Um, and she is a great host to lead the discussions this afternoon. So Thank you very much, Zara, and thank you as well to our wonderful panellists. Well, a huge wealth of experience between them. Um, and hopefully, please uh, do continue to ask questions, pop them in the chat. Um, and that's more than enough from me. So I'll uh, pass over to Zara now to um, introduce the speakers and lead the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Julia. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Women Who Challenge panel in celebrating International Women's Day. Um, as Julia has introduced, my name is Zara Rezahira Zakaria. I am the event manager for UOB Women in Finance. And it is very honored for me to be here and introduce you to this three amazing women that we have as our panelists for today and who will be sharing their experience on how to turn your passion, their passion into their jobs and for you into your jobs and make a tangible difference while doing so. So for those of you who feel like passionate about doing a job that you really love and want to make a big difference while doing so, you're definitely in the right place. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our first panelist, Georgina Magugu. So a bit about Georgina. Georgina currently works as a security analyst for World Bank, where she advises bank operation based on security and political developments. Before joining the World Bank, Georgina worked in um, Nigeria for UNODC, a job that took her across West Africa, working on a variety of governance and security issues. She has a master's from Georgetown University in security studies and an undergraduate degree in international relations from University of Birmingham. So welcome, Georgina. And our next panelist is Oyinka Sola Adebayo, where Oyinka is a master graduate in development economics and CEO of Neo Enterprise, a social economic impact tech startup that aims to use innovative tools such as technology hair and beauty to economically empower Black women. As a self motivated leader, Oyin leads various projects to stop the vicious cycle of disadvantage and poverty among young women, especially Black young women, whilst continues to empower the community around her. Through her Neo Enterprise, currently she's raising uh, for demand on AR and AI hair and beauty app, Neo Hair and Beauty, that connects um, undeserved beauticians and stylists to over 400 hair and beauty enthusiasts. So give, please give for welcome to Oyin. And our last, but certainly not least, please welcome Gabby Mendez. Gabby is an event operations manager at Rapid News Group by day and founder of Talk 20s by Night. Started blogging in 2014, she quickly found an interest in writing about the challenges facing young professionals in their 20s and helping others find their way in the world. Through her role at Rapid News, Gabby was named in the conference news 30 under 30 in 2019. And alongside her day job, Gabby started Talk 20s that support 20 something through a bi weekly podcast, monthly workshops, and online courses. Talk 20s won the best education podcast category for inaugural podcasting for business awards in January 2021. So please welcome Gabby. Okay, so. Those are, they are our amazing women today who will be sharing their experience. So before we jump to the pre-submitted question that you already sent us, I want to give the opportunity for each of our speakers to share their own, more about yourself and maybe your career history from graduating to university until where you become now. So I'm gonna start with um, Georgina. 
was hoping you wouldn't start with me first. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so hi everyone, um, I'm Georgina. Um, so from after finishing my undergraduate degree at the University of Birmingham, of course, at this point, I was looking for a degree that would allow me to essentially work doing what I was studying. So I wanted to keep looking at security in sub-Saharan Africa. I wanted to keep looking at development issues and that's what I wanted to do, but it was very difficult to find um, organizations or even like any companies that focused on these things. And not that it was difficult to find them, but they're very small. It's a very niche subject, you know, to be interested in, in development and security in, in sub-Saharan Africa specifically. Um, so I ended up doing a very small internship, short internship, sorry, um, in Rwanda. Rwanda is actually probably one of my first loves and why I even got interested in um, security in sub-Saharan Africa. So I ended up going to Rwanda for a few months and essentially looking at post-conflict reconstruction in the country. And I think that experience for me was really what solidified that it was security and um, post-conflict reconstruction in a country that was what my interest was in. From there, just to sort of speed it up, I um, applied to go to university, kept getting no's. This is to go for my master's at this point, kept getting no's. I applied because I really wanted to learn French to see on pro, got no's, um, which broke my heart because at this point I was like, I'm great. Why wouldn't you, <laughs> you know? Um, I have the requirements, but unfortunately it wasn't happening. And um, eventually by God's grace, I did get a position, um, an offer from um, Georgetown University in America, which came with a partial scholarship. And I was able to go and study abroad and also go to um, various internships abroad. Um, and basically one after the other, they all led me to um, the World Bank and um, working in their corporate security division. Um, and if there's anything I can say about my experiences, which sort of um, led me to where I am now is all the different unpaid, emphasis on unpaid internships that I did um, definitely helped me decide what it was that I wanted to do. Um, I did unpaid internships with um, development organizations that were focused on women, development organizations that were focused more on poverty and also um, security. And from all of that, I was able to say, okay, there's something that makes my, my heart tick and what, re what really excites me. And from that, I was able to like hone in on it and just keep focusing and keep applying for positions in that field. Um, and eventually after many years, we got here. So <laughs> That's very great. Thank you very much, Georgina. And next, um, Oyin, would you want to continue tell more about yourself and Neo Enterprise? It's really interesting reading about Neo and the impact that you made with especially young Black women. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here. And it's amazing to be with amazing other women as well. Mm -hmm. As well as I am a recent graduate. I actually graduated in September September or November 2020 um, from the University of Birmingham, studied development economics. Um, and I like to still call myself a developer economist, although I'm not necessarily working um, formally as an economist. Um, I'm still doing a lot of economics work. So I run an organization, an amazing organization, if I do so say myself, called Neo Enterprise. And it's made up of two arms, the Neo Network, uh, which is all about upskilling black women to become tech professionals or to break into tech. There's a shocking statistic um, of black women in tech. It's about 0.7% according to the British Computer Society. Um, so I really wanted to, to do something about it. And I also looked at the World Economic Forum. Um, you know, um, they, they brought out a report for, um, essentially like the careers um, report for 2030. And a lot of jobs in that report, um, a lot of black women were in. Um, that was going to be made redundant in the next couple of years. So I was like, hang on, <laughs> I've got a community of black women that are going to be in these jobs. I need to do something about it. So um, Essentially, we um, basically upskill Black women through um, various programs. So we've got a program called Black Loaded Bootcamp. It's a free bootcamp. At the end, Black women get jobs in, in companies like KPMG, Citibank, the likes. Um, and we've got um, stuff for um, Black women who are interested in gaming and VR and AR um, type stuff. Um, we've also got for entrepreneurs who want to be tech entrepreneurs and we've also got stuff for data science as well. So that's Neo Network. Um, now Neo Hair and Beauty is um, probably uh, what I like to call like my, um, my alter ego. I don't know, I guess. <laughs> um, so essentially, um, 
we service 400 clients across the Midlands um, and we've got a group of stylists who basically service these clients across the Midlands. And we're currently developing an AR and, and VR app that basically simplifies the booking and buying process of black women getting their hair done. So now you wouldn't have to stress about going to the shop and the shopkeeper can't understand exactly what you need and things like that. So we're just essentially trying to simplify that process. Um, in my spare time, I'm a board member um, of the African Chamber of Commerce. Um, I also advise the travel and tourism department in Nigeria, the African, um, the African Union in Nigeria to help them to improve their travel and tourism policy. I work very closely with the Ikiti state government in Nigeria as well to try and increase the women empowerment. I'm actually going to Nigeria in a couple of weeks and I'm really gonna be putting a lot of pressure on the government to ensure um, that there's development in that side. So that's a little bit about me. Um, yeah, I'm excited for today. I'm, I'm excited to answer as many questions as possible. Thank you very much, Oyin. Um, and last but not least, please, Gabby, let's introduce yourself and talk more about Talk 20s. I think this is really important, especially most of our participants are on my age group where we just turn 20s and try to figure out about what we're gonna do. So we're interested to know more about you and Talk 20s. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Firstly, I don't know how I can follow Georgina and Oyen because they <laughs> honestly amazing. Um, but yes, a little bit more about me and Talk20. So I went to the University of Birmingham. I graduated, I may feel old now, in 2016. Um, so yeah, not too long ago, about four, four and a bit years. Um, and, and yeah, so graduated in education. So spent kind of three years at university studying the psychology, the sociology, the history, the culture of how we behave and learn as human beings. It's, I'm sure as many of you know, if you're, if you're um, a, a current student at the University of Birmingham, that course is, often people look at it and go, you did a straight teacher training course, but it really isn't. It's much more about the theory um, of, of kind of um, education and how we all learn as human beings. So I came out of that course massively inspired, thinking I was gonna change the world, thinking I was gonna hold change all the way we learn um, different things. Um, and uh, most of my course did go on to be teachers and I kind of got to the end of university and absolutely panicked because I didn't see myself as a teacher and wasn't really sure what I was going to do next. Um, so panicked, really, when I say panicked, really panicked um, and ended up going to do my teacher training because I didn't know what else I was gonna do. And I thought my mum was like, oh, it'd be great for your skill set, you know, you can work your way up, it'd be really, really good. So I did do two years teaching when I graduated from university um, and it taught me a lot. Um, but after two years, I decided that I wanted to move away from the teaching profession and I career changed into a career working in the events industry. I've got quite a business head on my shoulders, hence why I have my own business now. And I just felt like that wasn't utilized enough when I was teaching. And I also felt like a lot of the stuff that I'd learned in my degree about how we can do education better I couldn't change from just being one person in the classroom. And so I wanted to kind of create this whole shift in education. And one of the things I saw when I was, when I was teaching was I was given a, a group of sixth form students to look after. So being only like 21, I think I was myself, um, I was a French teacher in a secondary school and my students were, the form that I was looking after were like 17, 18. And they were asking me tons of questions. How do I set up a credit card? What's it like living away from home? What do I need to know about this? What do I need to know about that? There's so many different questions. And I was like, hang on a sec. There's not enough that teaches you about this stuff. It's a lot through practical and learning, but it can feel quite overwhelming. And so once I left the teaching profession, I was like, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to do something that is a practical um, platform where people can find out these skills that they probably are too afraid to ask for in their 20s and no question is too silly so yeah we do that through uh, mainly the Talk 20s podcast but hopefully in the future in-person events and essentially I want to help as many people transition from university or college or whatever is their last form of full-time education into that big wide world of being an adult so yeah it's a little bit about me. Lovely that's really great okay so before we jump into the pre-submitted questions. Um, again, for our participants, please feel free to drop in your questions in the Q&A chat box. Um, we're gonna try to cover as many questions as possible today. And I think the great way to start today's conversation is by looking at 2021 International Women's Day theme. It's choosing to challenge. Now, I'm really curious with the different kinds of work that each of you have done, what kind of challenge 
or maybe um, obstacle that you choose to challenge with the work that you do. So anyone want to start? Um, I can start. Um, so one of the things that that's the common theme behind everything that I do within my organization generally, um, I choose to challenge poverty. Um, you know, one of the things that's really, really a common theme in, um, you know, in success rate of, of an individual and the lack of success rate of an individual is poverty um, or, or abundance. Um, so essentially, I would like to see a world where there's more women who are thriving, um, thriving not just as um, women, you know, who are mothers, but thriving in the careers um, and also thriving to kind of bring solutions to our world. Um, the more women we have that can come out of poverty, the better solutions that we will see for our world because heck, there's like 52% of the world is female, I think. Um, so we need to make that more representative. That's great. And um, Gabby or Georgina, do you want to add something to that? Yes, definitely. So kind of similar to what I, what I am saying, but I think that there's there's kind of a gap in, in, in terms of who you know to get into certain professions and jobs. Um, and that can really play itself out when you graduate from university. And often people find roles because of the connections that they have, whether that be through, you know, um, their, their family members or just various opportunities that they've had that they might find for future connections of. So I think there's a challenge that, you know, especially when, when job descriptions nowadays say they want at like five years experience and you're just a graduate you can't you can't possibly have that at that moment in time I think there's a challenge at that that you know people can be the right fit but be lacking in experience they might still be brilliant for your organization and so I choose to challenge choose to challenge that that's great and Georgina what do you choose to challenge as um I read a lot about what you do in UNODC and I find it really inspiring yeah, so with UNODC, my role was very different to what I do now. Um, now I'm focused on um, advising security and political mm -hmm. um, developments. Whereas in UNODC, um, I was, well, my first role with UNODC was focused on um, drugs um, and drug use, drug abuse and law enforcement in West Africa. So a very different role. And what we were trying to do is we were trying to, um, to essentially challenge this, um, this notion that what, what, amongst many things we were trying to challenge um, was this notion that drug, user, drug users are all criminals, this notion that drug users are all a certain kind of person and they can't be helped. And that the only way to deal with drug users is through the law enforcement and through a specific system. So what we tried to do was we tried to challenge that notion by bringing in psychologists, by saying that, no, this is something that can be dealt with from school ages. We can talk to these individuals. We don't, it doesn't always need to be through the criminal justice system that we deal with these individuals. Of course, when you then start discussing people who supply the drugs, then it's a different discussion. But the drug users and stuff like that, that was one of the things that we were trying to challenge, challenge this idea and this notion that was developing, that has developed in West Africa, that, you know, drug users are a certain kind of person. They um, come from certain kinds of backgrounds. Um, just trying to, by challenging those ideas and that those ideologies um, improve the way that we respond to these individuals, looking at it as more of an illness than it is a crime, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's fantastic. So we can see that each of you choose to challenge different things. And for Oyen, you said that you choose to challenge poverty. This actually um, connects to the next question that I'm about to ask. So what do you think is, um, what do you think that the UN SDG goal, which is one of them is tackling poverty, has made an impact on real life? Do you think is there it is, it is already having a real impact or should we do more with those SDG goals? Um, with the UN SDG goals, um, on the grand scheme of things, um, I don't, I, I have a bit of, a, of a, an interesting relationship with the SDG goals. Okay. Because they're great goals. And I think without the UN SDG goals, I don't know if my business will be where it is. It's, it was actually one of the main motivations for why I started my business. However, I think there needs to be a lot more accountability of how those UN SDG goals are contributing to making sure that there is no poverty. In fact, you, you would find that even due to the coronavirus or a lot of disparities, there has been an increase in poverty. 
So um, there's a lot of focus on reducing poverty, maybe in the West, but how can we work on make sure there's reduction of poverty in other parts of the world, in the West Africa, in Asia, and so on and so forth. So um, a simple answer to that question is probably more programs like what we do at Neo Enterprise can be done in, in countries like Africa. And I'm actually working on how to make that happen. To, to ensure that um, those those goals are actually, you know, actualized in real life, and it's not just a nice um, thing to put put on a website. Great, and maybe Georgina, um, from your experience, you'd want to add some more on your perspective. Yeah, and no, I definitely agree with Oi, and I think the SDGs are a great initiative to really understand what we're trying to achieve. You know, they are 16 goals that have, I think it's over 160 um, like targets within them, right? And so what it's very clear what we're trying to achieve, which is excellent because we've seen across the world that the inequality is massive and on a, on a great scale, we all need to get to a certain point um, to see true development around the world. However, the issue now is that they're just, it's like a talking point, essentially, almost I, to be controversial, International Women's Day, a talking point, you know? We've done it now, let's move on, you know? Um, and I, I really do believe the SDGs um, are at risk of, of not achieving what they've set out to achieve. You know, even before coronavirus began, even before um, we started to see the effects of coronavirus, we were not on track to reach the SDG goals. Um, and it's, uh, like Oyen said, there is a lot more that needs to be done and more accountability from these governments to reach these goals. Um, because otherwise, like I said, it just becomes a talking point that we have. Yes, we have these great goals and we're putting so much money towards behind um, achieving them, but are we actually achieving them? What needs to change about what we're doing? I think what, what the international community needs to do is really sit back and look at the Millennium Development Goals and understand why we didn't achieve all of them, understand why certain countries are different in achieving the goals, because we can't approach everything with a blanket approach. You know, we can't approach developing, um, you know, finance in, in Rwanda to finance in Ghana or Nigeria, because they're very different countries and they they deal with very different um, issues, you know? So um, I, I definitely agree with what Oyin was saying. And I think that the SDGs are at risk of, of failing. Um, so yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, now for, I think this question is more for Gabby. Um, you said that a lot of your students reach out to you and ask like how to set up a bank account, credit card. I think um, that's what me and most of um, the students in my age will probably ask someone like you as our teacher. So, but you were once also a student, right? So when you start your talk 20s or maybe when you start and decide, okay, I'm going to move from education to media entertainment. Did you seek any some kind of like help or maybe support during your university studies? Mm -hmm. um, so obviously uh, throughout education, uh, um, studying education at university, mm -hmm. I took up every single opportunity that was offered to me. So I studied abroad, I worked on campus. Rose at the beginning gave me a flashback because she mentioned fresh thinking. I've definitely worked on campus for fresh thinking. Um, so I think I kind of learned through a lot of experience and really putting myself out there, but I think that's not the case for everyone and not everyone feels comfortable enough to kind of throw themselves into these situations. Um, and there was a lot of things that I was like, how on earth do you even do this? And where do you find this information? Um, and I think a lot of the, the support networks at the university are brilliant in doing that and offering that um, and I think it's one of those things that a lot often we forget as alumni we think oh we've finished we've graduated we've got to you know move on from that but you, I think you're forgetting that you know the alumni support network is there to help and guide you and if you do need support in your career and change and stuff like that that is is an option for you I must admit I found the found the career change aspect of of, of my life it was it was amazing but I did probably I could I could have probably asked for more help along the way because you know I it was a really confusing time um and I wasn't really sure what direction to go in um and I think I really sat down and kind of looked at like what my values were what I what it was I wasn't enjoying about teaching or what it was I really wanted to get out of my life and I kind of used that as a starting point to then go well how do I find something that fits more of all the all the things that I'm trying to fit um into my life and that's how I kind of navigated um 
from from teaching into into working in the events industry and then starting my own business as well. That's great. And maybe Oyin, do you want to share that you seek any support maybe when you start um, Neo Enterprise? Yeah, so I uh, my undergraduate degree was in Nottingham Trent University, and then I sh shortly well, straight after I came to University of Birmingham. Um, I found that those the support from both universities um, was so, so important in pivoting me to where I am right now. In fact, when I think back at the first ever piece of funding that I got, that was through my, my undergraduate university. And when I think about, um, you know, the next, um, the, 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 the event that we ran that actually pivoted us to where we've gotten to right now in terms of our impacts and also even the, the bottom line of profit um, was actually because I was able to speak to someone like Mo um, from the entrepreneurship um, support um, program um, at University of Birmingham and that was able to help me to, to pivot my, uh, my idea. So it's really, really important to engage. Um, when you are at university, it's really easy to think, oh yeah, I'm just coming to you know, come and study and party or whatever, um, and you don't make the most of it. It's so important to make the most of all of those networks. I don't even think I will be in this room here if I didn't make the most um, of, of um, university and, you know, make the most of the network there as well. Yeah, that's so true because I think um, one of the biggest mistakes that, again, 20 something people like me made is that we're not utilizing this kind of platforms that the university gave, but thank you for, to ladies like you, we know that we should be seeking some help. We should be attending this kind of like event to get more support um, in maybe shaping our futures and not just ours, but the other people that you as well are impacting. So um, that's really interesting. And we have um, questions here uh, for Georgina. Um, hi, Georgina, thank you for sharing your story. Do you have any advice to share on how to maintain your resilience and optimism when things are not going in the direction that you want? <laughs> no, go on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm laughing because it has probably been one of the hardest things to do. I, I graduated undergrad in 2013. Mm -hmm. I got my job with the World Bank, which was in my mine the job i've wanted to do since i graduated in 2013 last year seven years seven <laughs> wow um it, it's it's not easy it really isn't and i think nothing in this life is that is good is easy if you really want it you have to keep reminding yourself how bad you want it it's easy to decide it's fine let me just go off and do this instead it's kind of what i want to do it's easy to do that it's easy to settle you know it's but one thing I had to keep reminding myself is, no, I'm not done yet. I'm, I, I want to experience. I want to know if this thing that I have, you know, this desire to be in is actually as amazing as I think it is, you know? Um, and for me, I, I received a lot of no's before I got to a yes. I had to go around the curve. So first, when I graduated, I went to Rwanda. I then came back, I worked with UNA um, Association, so United Nations Association London um, for eight months unpaid again. I then went into a law firm to work in recruitment um, for eight months um, before I got the opportunity to go to America to study. And, I, and all this while I was applying for masters in the UK and I was applying for masters in Paris. And in my mind, I had this idea that I would go this way, but the my career journey has been nothing short of like a slithering jumps, ups and downs, hurdles, everything. Um, and, I, and honestly, I'm thankful for that because I am so much more appreciative of where I am right now. And I feel like I can now talk to people that are trying to get to certain places in life and say, hey, look, it's not gonna be a bed of roses. It's not gonna be straightforward, you know? Just remind yourself why you started. Remind yourself why you want to do this thing and, and, and hold on to something. My thing that I held on to was my faith. It wasn't always easy holding on to my faith because at times I'd be like, God, you know, I've been praying and putting in the work. <laughs> why are we not there yet? But um, hold on to something, you know, something that will remind you that, okay, eventually it's going to come back. It's going to come together. Eventually we will get there. And I think like Gabby was saying, you know, put yourself out there, like, even if you are not in the field you want to be in, contact people that are in your field. When I was 
in a, um, a previous organization, I wasn't in the actual department I wanted to be in, but I said, that's fine. I'm going to message this guy who's in the department I want to be in. I'm going to ask him if he wants to go for coffee because I'm interested in terrorism or I'm interested in conflict in West Africa or whatever it is I was interested in. Just because I'm in the building doesn't mean I'm there yet. I'm still trying to get there. Um, so I think the major advice I'll give anyone is don't take no for an answer. Keep going, keep striving and find ways that will allow you to, to maintain your vision, maintain your, your desire and your passion for something um, and keep trying to achieve it. So for example, I worked on my unpaid internships whilst working part-time as a um, telecommunications assistant. So I was calling people, asking them questions about random things. And you know that was my way of paying the bills, but still trying to achieve what I wanted to achieve. So find the in-between that allows you to do that and keep going. I cannot emphasize how much you should keep going. You know, um, just really quickly, because I know I've spoken for a bit, um, at the end of the pursuit of happiness, when the guy gets the job that he really wanted, you know that moment, right? Literally, there is nothing that beats that moment and you will look back and be like, it was all worth it. So just keep at it. I cannot stress that enough. Wow, that's really inspiring. And we definitely can see how you keep positive and we can feel your positive vibes, even though the work that you deal with, it's really heavy dealing with terrorists. And oh my God, I cannot imagine how you maintain this positivity. So that's really great, Georgina. And now we have um, questions. I think this is more for Gabby and Oyen. Um, how has the pandemic affected your organizations and businesses? Have you been able to find new opportunities or maybe shifting your approaches compared to last year? And um, I don't know who's gonna start this one. Feel free I mean, to jump in. Yeah, 100% I can I can kick start the answers. Um, so I, I actually launched Talk 20s in January, 2020. And the plan for the business was to be an event, a kind of festival style event where you could go along and listen to inspirational speakers on various different topics, uh, talk about, you know, how to level up in your career, how to buy your first home, how to manage your well-being and have a great big, wonderful festival and event with loads of stands of companies that, you know, want to help you in your 20s. And that was my whole vision for Talk 20s in January 2020. But obviously, very quickly, coronavirus scuppered that idea as we can no longer meet in person. And thankfully I have managed to keep my full-time role in the events industry during this time. I work in exhibitions and trade shows and award ceremonies. Um, and thankfully I have been able to, 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 to I've, I've kept my job. Many people in the event industry have not. So I, I, I do count myself very lucky and do feel privileged to, to still have that. But it meant that I had to look at kind of my why, kind of similar to kind of what Georgina was talking about, rem remembering why you're doing this and thinking, well, does it have to be an event? Does it have to, does it have to be an event to help people in the way I want to help people? And I'd always kind of thought that a podcast would complement the event that I was planning to create. So instead I just launched the podcast and now it's it's probably even better than I could have ever imagined because the people that listen to the, the podcast now are nationwide, if not international, we get listens from all, all over the world. But when I was thinking about planning this event, it was going to be 100 people, not that it's a bad thing, but 100 people in Liverpool where I'm currently, where I currently live. And I would have just been helping those people. Whereas now I'm helping way more people from kind of, this weird way that we've all been thrown into our houses but we still want to connect and we still want to listen and we still want to learn so I think it really I mean I had to pivot immediately from starting a business and I think the hardest point after that is that how you kind of make keep that going alongside a full-time position as well and I think that there's definitely struggles there because I know all of us are doing lots of different things and wear lots of many hats. I've recently done an episode, our latest episode on the podcast actually is on being a multi-hyphenate, which I'm sure you guys would potentially identify as as well, because it essentially means that you are not just one thing in your job, you are many other things. And, you know, for example, I might be an event professional, but I'm also a business owner, a podcaster, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think there's there's you can overwhelm yourself quite a lot with all of these things when you start a business um, in your in, in in today's age. So so, yeah, that's kind of my journey through coronavirus. And uh, yeah, I had to kind of flip the whole business on its head almost immediately. That's great. Um, Oyin, do you want to share yours? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, 
I honestly, just like what Georgina was saying, faith has played a massive role. And actually, I, I can't really say it's, I can't really um, um, go without faith when, when I wouldn't have gone without faith when it comes to how my business has actually gone through this pandemic. Um, you know, um, we um, had the, the biggest event that we've ever had. We normally have summits every year, so like a you know, massive summit to kind of celebrate um, Black women in business, Black women in tech, you name it. Um, we had it in February 2020 at the Millennium Point in Birmingham. Um, it was over 350 women there and literally everything fell through. All the sponsors fell through, everything fell through. Um, and so I had to pay for it you know, from my own pocket. Um, and it wasn't cheap. It was thousands and tens of thousands of pounds. Um, but what I remember, um, that shortly after that, the hair and beauty part of our business had to stop because we couldn't service clients at all. Um, but what we had to do was pivot quite quickly. So now we decided, you know what, let's kind of go a bit ham on empowering, adding value to our stylists, making sure that um, they are equipped to be able to make multiple streams of income. Um, whilst new network was literally shooting off because there was now more demand for tech. Um, so uh, the organization, that all of those happened because I actually prayed during that, that first, that time when everything fell through, I was like, what do I do? Um, and what I found was things started to fall in place. Um, in terms of like our, in the organized like the organization, um, the hair and beauty side obviously has not been as successful as the network side, um, but the network side has just really opened up my eyes to understanding the possibilities that a young female like myself, um, that's got a background, you know, grew up in Nigeria. Not I'm not a techie, but I'm running a tech organization can actually do. So I just kind of encourage anyone who has any business ideas, who might be a bit worried because of the pandemic, you can do it. Um, and if you believe in yourself, you will be able to do it. You know, I would never have dreamed that my organization will be turning over seven, seven figures, but we are on track to do that by the end of next month. Um, literally from zero to seven figures, how crazy in a year. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much um, what I would say. Seven figures, wow, that's really amazing how you managed to achieve that during the pandemic. And Gabby as well, how you managed to use this current situation actually to um, grow your business. Um, and maybe while we, we're talking about the pandemic, um, Georgina, maybe you wanna share how the pandemic actually affect the workplace or maybe um, recruitment for um, young women, especially because we're focusing on um, celebrating women. Um, do you want to share your thoughts on that, maybe? Yeah, um, I think for me, because I actually changed jobs during the pandemic. I was in Nigeria, still working with UNODC, and um, then left Nigeria because I wanted to go and <laughs> do a job in London. <laughs> and then I got the call that I got in this position. So um, from the beginning to where we are now, I've pretty much been completely remote. Um, with the bank, um, the recruitment process was remote, remote, training was remote, everything's been 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 somewhat remote, which I, I, I couldn't say how it's affected me in, in, in that sense. I think the only thing I would say is obviously working remotely is, is difficult because, you know, you don't get to meet people, you don't get to really build those relationships that are so essential. Um, for someone who wants to build within a career and develop, you want to meet people that can be, um, I think they call them sponsors now, but like your mentor, essentially. You want to meet people that you can develop a relationship with and they can mentor you around the organization. And so that's been quite difficult. Um, I was really lucky in the sense that I was placed in a team where um, my manager is also in from London. Um, so in a very international team, my manager's from London and you know, British people have a sense of humor that is very specific to the UK. So we were able to build a friendship through that and that's allowed us, that's allowed me the opportunity to have this mentorship relationship with him. But um, I definitely think um, the pandemic has separated us. Yes, we have these amazing tools like Zoom and all the other different online um, tools that allow us to speak to each other um, and video chat with each other but it's still it's not as personal anymore you can't just be walking down the stairs and see a colleague or grab a coffee and just 
talk like we used to do, which I think it, it's a shame because it definitely did help with building relationships in the workplace and trying to navigate different roles and climbing the career ladder in general, you know. Um, but I am believing that Corona won't be around for much longer. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> we hope so that, yeah, we hope so that everyone can, everything can turn normal by, I don't know, maybe summer, if that will be great for all of us. Um, yeah, that's really, that's really interesting to see how all of you managed to overcome current situation. And talking about um, overcoming challenges and obstacle, um, for Gabby and Oyen, what kind of obstacle that you face as a female entrepreneur in starting your enterprises? Um, I think for me, one of the major challenges, I, I would even add the the um, the variable of being young as well. Um, being a young, I would add a young black, <laughs> young black female, being young black female, a lot of times what I found was um, that I wasn't taken as seriously, um, you know, um, people have perceptions of who they think you are in your in your mind. So in their mind, and I remember even from that summit that fell through, we had like a massive sponsor commit and he was like, you know, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think, you know, um, that was that was that was one of the major things that I think I thought played a massive role. The fact that I was young, the fact that I was a black female played a massive role in, in, in that. I think another another challenge as well that I have in terms of um, your growing as an entrepreneur, it's also um, understanding understanding that I haven't learned everything. I don't know everything. So when I'm employing people, when I have people under my belt, having that confidence that they they can actually be better than me and finding those people that are better than me, where do I find them? I don't know because most of my people in my ecosystem are, you know, are in my age or, or whatnot. Um, so those those are the two two main things. But thankfully, I think you know, although the, the, it was a horrible thing that happened with George Floyd, um, thankfully people opened up their eyes to see, you know, the, the inequalities that exist in the world. Um, and obviously, we if you listen to the Harry and Meghan um, interview recently, you would also understand that there's a lot more disparities and inequalities in the world. And actually. That it just made me understand that the work that I'm doing is is very, very important because we need to ensure that everyone has a level playing field with equality of opportunity. Um, but I won't stop. I'm going to keep talking about it and I don't care. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we hope that you don't stop, Ian, because we really need yeah. more young generations like you to speak up your voice. And so, yeah, Gabby, how about you? Yeah, I, I also think kind of similar in a way, but um, there's the stats and research and lots of work that has been done to show that women who start businesses uh, tend to not get as much funding opportunities as their male counterparts. Um, and I think that is something that, again, we should choose to challenge because, you know, look at the two organizations that, you know, uh, we're talking about here today. We know that we can help so many people across the UK and across the world be better in their lives to get so you know improve their life chances so investing in, in businesses like this is obviously going to help way more people than just you know other uh, maybe other kinds of businesses would so I, I would honestly say that one of the challenging things to overcome is to get people to kind of buy in to what we're trying to create because talk 20s isn't a charity it's not a charitable organization we still have to pay the bills we still have to do everything like you know we run like a normal business and so it's sometimes a challenge to get people to on board to actually part with it and especially as kind of what i do is podcasting a lot of people think that we are a platform where they can just promote themselves on it and so i get many a pitch from businesses who would like i'd love to come on the podcast and chat about xyz i'm like okay like that's fantastic but like you know we're not a platform where you can just come on and get free advertising so it's really really tricky to kind of find that balance and also just off the back of that as well my hardest thing I have to say is no to a lot of these people because they are just looking for potentially a quick advertise for the business and, and and want to reach our audience but might not necessarily want to part with investment and stuff so I think 
sometimes you have to learn your voice and like I know exactly who I want on my podcast I know exactly the kind of people that I want to be speaking to so you're damn right I say no to a lot of people uh, which is sometimes hard and you obviously have to say it in a really polite way and try not to offend anyone and just say thank you so much for your interest but I do think that that is a real big challenge for me as well because I feel like I know where I want it to go I know what kind of people I want on there um, and so yeah I think there's there's a whole I could talk about challenge within growing a business like till the cows come home um but I think the 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 main thing is kind of being strong and 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 knowing where you want to take something and 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 never straying from that or not straying from it as often as you can you know so sorry I just want to add to what Gabby just mentioned Gabby you literally you literally speak my language I love it yeah (laughs) I think I think that thing about that finance aspect of things you know, I've, I can count, I've had about 190 meetings probably this year with potential partners of mm. an organization who seem to want to, you know, pioneer diversity and inclusion in their organization, but aren't ready to commit. So a lot of the time, I think it's a case of people are still uncomfortable and, you know, and are not ready to invest and put their money where their mouth is, you know, mm. they're a value exchange. Um, and so for anyone on here that's looking to start a business or, and, and you're a female just be aware that that may be the case and don't get discouraged just keep going um but also be flexible I mean I found that I've had to be flexible um some of those things so sometimes someone might might, might not be willing to pay my fee but they might they might really they really might want to engage with what we're trying to do and really make a change so I would be flexible with that and as I build that relationship what we find is that actually in the long run it works out a lot better so um stay on the line stay on the line don't, don't come off the line <laughs> that's great um while we're talking on the topic about starting your own put the money where your mouth is it's actually really um thank you gabby and Owen for bringing out that because most of us aren't really brave enough to pursue what we really passionate about and in terms of business um maybe you want to share what are the qualities and characteristics maybe that are important in taking that big leap to start your business, your passion, and how it is important for women actually to take up space in businesses? Mm -hmm. I think it's absolute belief and bravery to Mm -hmm. put yourself out there and start something that you perhaps don't see already out there, or perhaps you do, but you think you can do it better. Um, or just as good as what you see out there. I think it takes a lot of self-belief and that's not just a destination that is a continuous journey because you're going to have peaks and troughs of self-belief along the way. You know, you might start off feeling great and then something might happen. You go, oh my goodness, oh, what am I doing? And it's about continuing to kind of keep that self-belief and just know like what you are working towards is something that you are truly passionate about. This whole um, webinar is on, you know, making your job your passion. Um, And I think it's that, you know, idea that you've got to believe in yourself. I've said it from the start, it's the simplest thing, but if you don't believe that you can do it, you're not going to get very far. So I think, yeah, be brave and believe in yourself. I'm going to start sounding like a real cliche film now, but it's true. Like if I didn't inside think that one day I see this being, you know, a really big business and you know my full-time thing then I, I wouldn't be doing it I, I I wouldn't you know so um I think it's I think that's personally what I would I would say oh Gabby that was great but I think um what I would say is think big take action and keep pushing so um think big like I don't think I would be able I would have been able to get to this part of in my business if I didn't think big if I just thought oh yeah I just want to just do small things no actually I want to change the world that's why I'm here listen I'm not here to do anything less than that um so think big and actually don't just think big because you can think big all you like but you also need to take action make sure that there's actionable steps um for that thinking big okay great I want to be able to make 100k a year I don't know I'm just giving an example okay what am I going to do to do that um, take action and, and actually there will be obstacles in the way but just keep pushing because um, you can do it and you know there's a thing where you if you put out what you want to achieve it will happen and that's literally what's happened for me every time I put out I want to do this so I want to say oh yeah you said you want to do this okay here it is do it um, and be consistent and be integral with the work that you produce as well 
Great. Thank you very much. That's really inspiring. Um, I think it's a bit a slap on the face for myself because we're just talking about like, okay, I want to do this, but we haven't been able to brave enough to take the leap. But thank you again for kind of giving us that push of courage and belief. And that's from our business aspect. I think now we want to touch a bit on the workplace um, with Georgina. Um, what do you think about um, how we can, as a woman, especially young females, to enter a very male dominated workplace? Because um, I don't know um, the environment in World Bank, but um, because as an economist myself, I try to look on World Bank and it's really very competitive to get in there. So do you want to give your thoughts on that? Yeah, certainly. Um, so my team with the bank, there is loads of different levels, layers. Um, and my immediate team is very, like, there is such a good gender balance, you know. Um, there's, a, I think, there's like six women, no, less. There's like four women and three guys in my immediate team, in the analyst team. And obviously, the corporate security team is huge. There's like massive amount of people. But in my immediate team, I have many teams, but in the specific analyst team, there is a really good gender balance. And all the women are very outspoken and they challenge a lot. And um, and when I look and I compare it to other roles I've been in where I've been surrounded more by men and I've especially working in Africa, surrounded by some African men and like Oyen was saying, being a young black woman, <laughs> um, it's not always received well. And one thing I've always taught myself is you're here for a reason, you got this position, so you better make yourself known. Um, but make a seat for yourself at the table. And if they're not giving you a seat, create one. Bring yourself regardless. And I know it's so hard to say that. And one thing that I learned from when I was in undergrad, I'd go to these, um, these different networking events and they'd say, you know, you have to go up to people, you have to approach them and you have to say what you want to say. And I remember one event, I met Navi Pile. She was the then UN um, Human Rights, UNHCR, um, I've forgotten what her title was, but she was the head of that organization for the UN. Navi Pile, Google her. I go up to her, I'm trying to be more of a shark in these environments. And I say to her that I think you're a big deal because I had no idea what to say to this person. And it was my first time really putting myself out there. And those are the words that left my mouth. I think you're a big deal. She looked confused, she laughed, and we had a conversation. And so I think one thing I would advise, which is slightly different to the question you asked me, I would advise for young women who are just trying to push themselves and put themselves out there is just do it. The worst thing someone can say to you is no. And yes, you will be upset for a few hours or maybe a few minutes, you will mourn, but you have to move. Me and my friend say this thing, we mourn, but we move. You have to keep moving because you want this and nobody's gonna want it more than you do. Nobody's gonna push for it more than you are. So yes, you will make mistakes along the way. You will tell some very influential people that you think they're a big deal and be embarrassed for a few hours, but you will keep going. And one day, eventually, it will be a story you will tell on a platform like this, because somehow you have gotten to where you wanted to get to in the short term. So um, that's, that's the advice I would give on that. Just keep going and put yourself out there as much as you feel uncomfortable and you will make mistakes. Nobody does this without making mistakes, but just keep pushing yourself and keep pushing those boundaries. That's great, thank you very much. Um, I think we have like um, last two questions. Um, so anyone can answer for these last two. So what do you think about the discussion of gender diversity? Um, do you think that we already on the right track or should we do something more or just share your thoughts on our discussion of diversity? Anyone can answer that? Um, in terms of diversity, um, I think huh, we're on the right track. <laughs> <I think. laughs> There's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to diversity and inclusion, because I think we, you know, there's a lot of people kind of saying, yes, I'm championing diversity and inclusion, but the real, I think the real challenge will come when, when what we're trying to, um, you know, actualize starts to actually happen in society. We really understand whether our society is really for diversity and inclusion. So 
there has been obviously, obviously the death of Judge Floyd, um, you know, and Black Lives Matter and all that kind of stuff um, has played a massive role um, in, in people listening to more, you know, conversations about diversity and inclusion. Um, but I do think that it's going to take some time. And I'm saying this from experience and being in meetings in rooms with very senior people in very, in very big corporate um, organizations, because I still think there's still a lot of unlearning to do. Um, and we all have to really, really commit to that education, not by, not just by speaking about it, but really our hearts has to connect to that mission. Um, so yeah, pretty much that's kind of how I see it. Great. And I think we're um, gonna jump right into the last question. Um, each of you can maybe answer it in a very brief um, punchline maybe. So what advice would you give to young women who for maybe Gabby and Oyen who want to start their own enterprise and for Georgina who maybe want to make a big, big difference by um, joining international organization. And also to add up maybe, what do you think the future uh, of business enterprise as well as the workforce for female, young female like us? I think it's about being bold, being brave and speaking your truth as well. Um, don't shy away from the person that you are and the person who you want to be. Like be brave and, and just go for it because you've got the power within you to achieve anything that you set your mind to. You just have to believe it. So yeah, is that brief enough? <laughs> Yeah, that's great. So, um, are you in or Georgina, maybe? Yeah, um, I think just on the lines of being brave and being bold, I think, yes, please be brave and please be bold. Um, but be very clear of exactly what you want to um, achieve. Um, I found that in my journey, when I had, when I lacked clarity, I knew, I knew exactly what I wanted, but I, I didn't know how to communicate that in a clear manner. It actually affected me in actually doing those things. So be very clear about what you want to achieve um, and talk to everybody that wants to hear about what you, you know, talk to everybody. It doesn't matter if they want to hear it or not, to tell them anyway uh, about what you want to achieve. Because what you find is that you'd be able to have people to support you to get to where you want to get to. That's great. Um, I think it, it's, it's, it's like we were talking about earlier, we, we've still got a long way to go with gender diversity and, you know, women taking up more positions of power, but I think it's an awesome time to be a woman. We um, are seeing, especially a woman of color, for me personally, um, seeing Ngozi um, take over her position and seeing um, over in the US, vice president. It's, it's an exciting time to be a woman and it's even more exciting time to be a black woman. We still deal with a lot of challenges on a daily basis, but at least I see these women taking up positions of power, taking up space, and I know that I can do it myself. And I think the one advice I would give everyone, and just to touch on what you were saying before, when you apply to these big organizations, these international organizations, and you know, you can just imagine the number of people applying, don't let that discourage you. One advice, piece of advice that I've held on to since I was an undergrad, and I still do to this day, is I message people a lot on LinkedIn, a lot. LinkedIn is my friend. You think I, I'm literally always on LinkedIn, emailing everybody, asking them about what they do, how did they get there? And not everyone will reply and that's okay. Again, don't be afraid to hear no. Don't be afraid to get a door slammed in your face. Don't be afraid of rejection letters. It's okay. Because eventually that rejection letter will say congratulations, eventually. They will have to give you a yes. So my advice would be don't stop, keep going. There are so many amazing examples that we have today. And I'm really so thankful to be on this panel with these amazing women because they're amazing examples of things that we're doing as women in you know, taking up space, making room, letting our voices be heard. So just keep going um, and be inspired by the things that you see and the people that you see. And try not to, it's okay to be upset about things, but don't let that upset and that disappointment, you know, stop you from going back out there and getting back, back out there. So that would be my advice. Oh, that's very inspiring. Yeah, you all heard it, don't stop. But unfortunately for our event, we have to stop here today. So I would like to thank all this amazing woman today for Gabby, Georgina, Oyen, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you to all our attendants for the amazing questions that you already pre-submitted. And right now I'm gonna hand it out to Juliet. Well, 
what I mean, what can I say? Absolutely superb panel. Thank you all. You know, my heartfelt thanks. Thank you all ever so much. Inspirational uh, discussions, fantastic, inspiring women. Thank you, Zara, Georgina, Oyen, Gabby, you know, women leading the way. So um, thank you all ever so much for joining us and your very powerful words this afternoon. Thank you all attendees for joining us as well. Please do check out the hashtag BBSEDI um, and look forward to uh, seeing you all next time. Next month we'll do a webinar so keep out for um, information on that. Thank you again ever so much everybody and have a great afternoon. Let's continue to choose the challenge.